anyhow, he's... Uh, he's a very rich man. <laughs> very grumpy, apparently. Yes, he lives in a, in a kind of a, a castle thing. It's completely surrounded with barriers and dogs and guards. He's a very well-guarded man. But also uh, brilliant. Um, well, I think, you know, everyone knows, you know, great, great songs, great music. But the thing I like about him most is his arrangements. I think it's very inspiring because he has, you know, amazing chords and the songs are very good, but it's through the arrangement of what instruments do what and how the voices are. and It really brings out totally everything from, from the chords, you know. And it's kind of inspiring to make you, know, make you think how to extract kind of as much, you know, interesting things out of your music. So certainly after listening to Morricone, it did change, you know, a bit how I approach, you know. <sighs> but I mean, like, any, like a lot of composers, he stopped really doing very interesting things as far as I'm concerned in the mid 70s, but... I mean, he still did some interesting soundtracks afterwards, but there were two, uh, I don't know, the arrangements had, had gone really and, and, and the kind of more sort of straight soundtrack kind of style came out, you know, I think. I remember as a schoolboy um, watching for the first time, like, The Good, The Bad, The Ugly and The Fistful of Dollars a few dollars more, had a little film season. And I loved the films, but it was really the music that kind of hooked me. And I just remember seeing the start, you know, of Good, The Bad, The Ugly. And the music just was like, you know, nothing I'd ever heard. So even at that age of like 12, it was like, you know, kind of hyperdelic. Kind of, very, everything's very strange. It was very, every, as if everything was maximized, really brought out and blossomed and it was very strange and and this kind of sound is something kind of stayed with me, you know, stayed with, yeah, I think. very good and um, has one of the most amazing songs, the Radiator song. I mean, that's totally amazing. And the very early David Lynch films have very interesting soundtracks, but Elephant Man's not bad.
Hans Zimmer seems to sum up everything I don't like in modern like soundtracks and in the same way of modern kind of approaches to making film and it's it's very market driven so there must be no confusion or contradiction or no kind of uh, rough edges you know everything must really be very precise to what the producers think an audience will understand at that point you know because no ambiguity you know and I think that's what makes films lose their interest you know but I suppose it's what makes them more popular for some people, I don't know. But you know, it's also like, the soundtracks are so much lower now in films than they, they used to be. And I think this is because people really, or well, the producers seem to think that people want special effects, you know. So all the bangs are really loud and the crashes, but the music's like really far, and it, I don't, so you can't even really tell if it's good or not good, you know. Like, I'm sure on the new Planet of the Apes, the music is going to be terrible, and, you know, because the original Planet of the Apes was quite good.